why is literally no one talking about Platinum End? This series took the world by storm and had a ton of hype leading up to its release due to the fact that it was coming from the creators of Death Note. But once the series was airing, radio silence. Nothing. Why? Well, first of all, this series has had its fair share of ill reviews and definitely has not been received in the same light but um, <laughs> that Death Note was. Addressing the immediate elephant in the room, yes, I'm Aaron Yeager. It's just one of those days, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But if you wanna see why I looked like this, then check out my TikTok, I guess. <laughs> I do wanna give a trigger warning at the very beginning of this video, just saying that this anime series deals with an unheard of amount of sensitive, triggering topics, especially those regarding mental health. And so I would advise that if those things are not things you want to hear about, then this is probably not the video or the series for you. So Platinum End is a series that I was so incredibly excited for. I'd been so hyped for this series ever since it was announced. And then I almost didn't even realize it had released because no one was talking about it. And I'm just like, what's, what's going on here? Isn't this supposed to be like the anime of the year? That's like how I thought it was gonna be. I did not see a soul talk about this anime and the two people that I knew that gave it a chance literally stopped after episode one. Since I hadn't seen anybody talking about it, I got curious and I looked up Platinum End on YouTube and while there are some videos discussing the series, I had just expected there to be way more. So before watching, of course, I looked at the reviews because the few YouTube videos that I did see were basically like, don't watch it, it sucks, like the manga was bad, don't it's not good, which was super disappointing for me because I was very, very excited. But you know what? I decided to commit and watch the whole thing anyways. So for anybody who is unfamiliar with the series Platinum End or only knows of Platinum End in the context of can it possibly live up to its magnificent predecessor, Death Note, then here is a quick summary for you. So we basically start the series with Mirai on the top of a building, ready to no longer be on top of said building. And instead of falling to the ground, he is caught and rescued by an angel called Nase. This angel then offers him two priceless abilities and tries to convince him to go on living. As he accepts these gifts, however, he gets thrown into a competition of sorts with 12 other candidates. And these candidates are God candidates. Now, every single god candidate was in a similar situation to Mirai when they had an angel appear to them and were chosen to be a god candidate. So as you can imagine, all of these characters have trauma on some sort of level. And will that trauma be unpacked? Most likely not. <laughs> In a lot of the scenarios, it won't. So one of these 12 individuals who are god candidates become the next god. Sounding a little familiar to Death Note here. <laughs> so basically, instead of Shinigami, we've got angels. And instead of giving out Death Notes, they're giving out wings and arrows. Instead of L, we've got this miniature L. <laughs> Doesn't serve the same purpose as L, but he's a miniature L. This felt to me like too similar of a concept to Death Note to not be directly related to Death Note. I was kind of excited at first because I thought like, oh, maybe this exists in the same universe as like the Death Note and the Shinigami. And maybe there'll be some really cool connection between the two series. Nope. <laughs> nope, there's not. It's just a very similar plot, but they didn't mirror it in any way. So honestly, to me, it felt like a weird choice to basically do like a reverse of Death Note. I don't know. It just felt like they were way too closely linked to not actually be closely linked. So it seemed like a weird choice to make it such a similar plot, but hey. Now, while I have quite a few negative things to say about this series, as many other people did, I do have some positives, so don't worry. Okay, so I literally look like a rat right now, but I just had to show you guys my face after finishing the last episode because I filmed this before the last one came out. <laughs> um, and maybe I don't have as many positive things to say as I thought I did. So I'll pop in every once in a while with this picture to just <laughs> give you any thoughts that have changed since seeing that last episode. This is not gonna be me being like, never watch this. It's a total waste of your time. <laughs> this, okay, this hits different with this eye makeup, but just bear with me here. I did actually happen to disagree with a lot of the negative things that reviewers were saying. I saw a lot of complaints about our main character, Mirai, being a terrible, lame, boring, awful protagonist. And I 
disagree. I very much so disagree. I found Mirai to be one of the most refreshing parts of the entire series. I saw a lot of complaints saying that the main character was way too morally righteous, way too set in his morals, way too goody two shoes. Like he would much rather risk his own life being harmed than to harm another's. And because we're seeing all these extremes of just how terrible people in the world can be, and we're looking for a new god amongst these people, it's very concerning. So the fact that he is actually this very, you know, godlike um, kind of figure who's just always wanting to do what's right and peaceful and that type of thing, I think it's very important to the series, honestly. Maybe it's not as fun as him kicking butt all the time, but I think it's super important on a deep level. Mirai being our protagonist, whether or not he becomes the god, he is definitely going to be at least the person that represents this godly kind of view. But I would argue that most anime protagonists are actually very similar to Mirai. I mean, when have we ever seen Naruto or Luffy on Alive Any Bad Guys? You know, Naruto would rather give the bad guys a therapy session than fight them, <laughs> if at all possible. And I mean, that's okay. I think that's a good thing. So I would argue that a lot of anime protagonists are actually very similar to Mirai, even if it doesn't seem that way on a surface level. So I think since many other anime protagonists don't always jump to, you know, the bad guys, <laughs> I think it's unfair to act like Mirai's unwillingness to stoop to that level makes him weak as a protagonist or a bad character or a boring character or just ruins the series as a whole because I do not think that's the case. Mirai is not the problem with this series. There's problems, but it ain't him. I'm surprised I'm sitting here defending this series as much as I am because boy, are there a lot of problems, but you know what? Every series has its good points. I don't care how bad it is. There's gotta be something in there that we can be positive about. Yeah, this face begs to differ. There are many shocking moments in this series. If just the overall concept isn't shocking enough, there are many incredibly shocking, disturbing, just hard to watch moments in this series. And that's not inherently bad, but they serve no purpose in most scenarios. So it just kind of feels like, are you showing this just to be shocking? And why are we not tying this into anything? And what is the purpose of just showing all these like, just hard to watch things with literally no purpose behind them? And I'm not saying that just because something is disturbing that it should not be shown. I think, you know, obviously there are uses for disturbing scenes in cinema, but you gotta do something with it. And I feel like they missed a lot of opportunities to do something with said choices. For example, spoiler, mega spoiler here, mega, mega spoiler. So skip to this timestamp if you don't wanna hear this. The death of Kanade reveals a child. And we're all just kind of like, hey, oh, this child in the mask, he was there before. And now he's sitting here in this evil mastermind chair with like video screens. And it's like, okay, so he was controlling Kanade right? No, <laughs> it, he, he wasn't really. I mean, he was, but he wasn't. And this moment I was like, whoa, I was ready to be wowed. I was ready to be like, you know what, Platinum Man, you are onto something here. And they dropped the ball. This moment I was like, oh my God, was he good all along? And this kid's just like masterminding the whole thing. Like, was he good all along? And they, you know, him for no reason. No reason at all. Like that would really hit hard on the main characters and it was already hard enough for them to make the decision to assist in, you know, that whole scenario. And so it would have been this incredibly shocking and plot moving um, moment. And instead it was just like, this kid wasn't even controlling him like at all. So Kanade was just a bad person. He was just a bad person. These were all his ideals. He had been going around and fighting people and stuff before that kid had even found him. And so it was kind of just like pointless. And then the kid just, you know, ceases to exist pretty soon after. It was just, it was very weird. If, it, there was just so much stuff where it's like, wow, this is important. No, it's not. <laughs> Like, it literally didn't matter. I don't know. You know what? Maybe I need to utilize my Aaron Yeager powers here and just, you know, change the way that you handled Kanade's plot. It would have been way more interesting if he was good all along. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> all right, there's my contribution. History rewritten. The show was very overly sexual at a lot of points for literally 
no good reason, no good reason at all. Very shockingly, gruesomely rated 18 plus for just no purpose, no purpose whatsoever. Like it's just to the point where it's just gross. It was just like, why is this here? Like, who was this for? What was this for? Nasty. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like maybe they're justifying it as like, oh, just trying to show how terrible humankind is or something. I don't know, but it felt so unnecessary and disturbing. It was really just not needed. And they really weirdly kind of, you know, spiced up the angels a little too much in my opinion. I think it felt kind of weird. Like they couldn't give us this version of Ryuk, but they decided to make the angels you know, not suitable for work for some reason. I don't know, it, weird choice. There's a very bizarre scene. If, if the first opening scene wasn't bizarre enough in episode one, episode one is just gonna be like a roller coaster. I almost stopped after episode one and a lot of people do, honestly. There's a very weird ant scene. This will be a spoiler too. Spoilers, if you don't want the scene ruined for you, skip to this timestamp. But if you've seen it, you know, there's a very weird ant scene. For what? Basically, Mirai's angel Nase encourages him to go find out the truth from his aunt and basically get his aunt to cease to exist from his actions. But he does so by shooting her with a red arrow, which the red arrow makes somebody fall head over heels in love with you and do whatever you say. Now, most of the times throughout the series that this red arrow is used, it's not really ever hypersexualized. Most of the time it just makes them like, ooh, you know, got a little crush or like, Ooh, I really like them, I'm nervous. And that's that. Or just like, oh, I admire them or whatever, like just normal. But you know, of course the one time the nephew uses it on his aunt, it's gotta be weird. Like, oh, why? Gross, I don't know. Like an aunt and a child, a middle school graduate. And she's just throwing herself at him. Like, so unnecessary so unnecessary. Something I found very strange about the series, um, not necessarily bad, but strange, was that the angels throughout the series are very demon-like. And you'll see this right off the bat. It's not necessarily a spoiler. You honestly see the biggest example of this right off the bat at the very first episode. Um, they suggest obtaining happiness through cheating, manipulating, violence, stealing. And it's just like, aren't you angels? Aren't we trying to find a new God here? Why are we like encouraging them to commit like every sin on the list? <laughs> I don't know, it felt very weird. I was like, this feels more evil than like Ryuk. Like Ryuk just wanted some apples. Like this feels just like even more <laughs> evil than the Shinigami were. So I don't really understand what that whole deal was, but you know, I digress. And I mean, that could have been something really interesting, honestly, the fact that the angels were very demonized. And I thought that there maybe be some sort of explanation for why that was um, later on in the series. And surprise, there's not. <laughs> so don't expect one. It just is what it is, I guess. This show, like I mentioned earlier, has super, super dark undertones, um, which is fine. A lot of really great anime are dark. Attack on Titan, pretty darn dark. Um, but with reason and handled well most of the time. This series, in my personal opinion, handles a lot of the dark themes very irresponsibly in a lot of ways, especially when the whole premise of the show is these 12 people tried to end it all. And so we decided we're gonna make them a god. you think they'd handle it a little responsibly and carefully, they don't. Mental health can also be a very interesting trope in media and it can be portrayed in a lot of really artistic and creative ways that are very deep and help give people an understanding of what others go through and what others struggle with. And it can also really resonate with people who struggle with those things a lot of the time. This one, I don't know, you know? I'm not so sure that this one pulls that off. I mean, I'm sure in some ways people can relate to the character's struggles, of course, but there's also a lot of very irresponsible 
ideas and themes surrounding the idea. In the series, the angels offer a lot of quick solutions to these people who have lost their will to live and go on. It's very much like, here, this will get you love, this will get you money, like whatever. And it's like, woohoo, money, I'm better now. Like, just honestly unrealistic and also just very irresponsible to imply that that will cure depression, basically. Um, just very weird. You would just think it would handle it a bit more intelligently. I don't know. When it's like the main plot of the whole show, maybe it's just me, but I have seen a lot of people complain about that being very irresponsibly done. Okay, my next point. The Gundam guy. Gundam guy is dumb. I don't get it. I don't get it. It, to me, all these like superhero-esque costumes throughout the series really cheapened the series. Really thought that it felt like they just did it to be like, oh cool, look at these, you know, these crazy suits they're fighting in. Like it just seemed like it was done for just this like wow factor and like that was it. I do understand that overall this did seem to end up being like a battle royale type anime. So I guess I kind of get that there was an emphasis on the battle, but I really do think that the costumes kind of cheapened the depth that the series could have had and took away from a lot of the very human aspects of these problems that we were dealing with. And I think it was kind of almost making the god candidates too godlike in a way. I think it would have been much more interesting if they were just very, very humanized. And honestly, there was a lot of very confusing weaponry throughout the show, and I'm not even talking about their arrows. If you know, you know, but there's just like a bunch of stuff where it's just like, all right, let's just, let's calm it down on all this battle stuff. Why can we never get an anime series that is not in high school? Especially ones that are rated mature. High schoolers technically are not supposed to be watching this. You know, so why are we trying to relate so hard to kids? Why does it have to be kids? And why do we, you know, fan service those kids? Why didn't we just make them adults? And we honestly even barely got high school because our main character is graduating middle school at the beginning of our series. So he's just barely a high schooler, but looks like a grown man somehow. There's no reason that a majority of the God candidates needed to be kids. I do understand that of course, the type of issue that it's handling affects people of all ages. So I do think that yes, all ages should have been represented. There should have been some kids. Sure, our protagonist can be a kid, okay? Oh, sure. <laughs> But it seems weird that so many children would be chosen as an option of becoming God. Ruler and creator of everything. That's a lot of responsibility. But you know, maybe it was more so about saving the lives of the youth. I'm not really sure. They never explain it. <laughs> I found it very strange and odd that every God candidate was just conveniently in Japan. They like really just brush over and explain this of basically just being like, well, you know, Japan has a high rate for that type of thing happening to people. So that's why all of the God candidates came from here. But honestly, this felt kind of lazy and it felt like it could have been really interesting if there was people, you know, worldwide. Like sure, there could have been a bunch of people in Japan, but it would have felt really interesting to have like at least a couple of God candidates like elsewhere around the world it could have added just like an extra kind of layer to it, especially because they can travel so quickly around the world that it like wouldn't have really separated them much to be from different continents, countries, everything. I don't know. It just felt kind of like a lazy explanation to just be like, they're all from here just because we said so. <laughs> okay, so major spoilers here. Towards the end of our series, there is a new antagonist introduced and honestly, I hate him. <laughs> I think he's gonna go down on the list with like Show Tucker, Donzo, all those people as one of my most hated anime characters of all time. The professor, I would square up. <laughs> with this professor. I just, he was just the worst, just insufferable. And I'm sure that was the point. So good on them for making a just villain that is very hateable because it worked. They did a good job on that. So this new character gets introduced basically just with the whole purpose of exposing God as fake, being fake and just like ripping all hope away from humanity and humanity just like accepts it. Like, it's just like, oh, the rates are going down as we speak for people that believe in the God just because this one guy said so. So we all just believe it. Like, it just felt super weird. Like, you know, there's plenty of people in the world who don't believe and who voice their opinions of non-belief and just like, you know, the whole world just isn't automatically like, oh, okay, we don't believe anymore. I don't, it just felt weird. It just felt 
rushed like many other moments in the series and like it was just thrown there just to be thrown there honestly and like i understand there had to be some sort of questioning of the religious basis of what was going on amongst the candidates but it just felt like it was done in a really weird and negative way without much explanation for why this character really even felt that way it was just very much like it, they call the god a creature he's like he's a creature he's fake he's not real we don't need him we're not gonna have a new one because I say so. <laughs> like, it, I mean, like it's it's fine for there to be a character with a negative viewpoint like that, but back it up with something. It just felt very like rushed and sloppy, honestly, and just annoying. It was like, okay, get out of here and let the rest of them figure out their thing. Like go away, let them figure out who's God. <laughs> Already defended Mirai. So you guys know that I was a fan of him. Um, the character Mukaido is a very interesting character. You will see if you watch the series, he definitely added a lot of depth and meaning and purpose to the series that I think a lot of other characters just didn't add. Nakaumi, our L lookalike. Um, I actually did end up enjoying his character and he, there was some interesting things going on with his character in the last episode or two. I think I revoke this statement. <laughs> Okay, when I said the last episode, clearly I meant the last two that I had watched, episode 22 and 23. Those were good. Episode 24, Nakaomi, um, well, yikes. <laughs> You're just gonna have to watch. Um, it, it's the reason why I'm making the face. <laughs> and then one of my favorite things of this whole series is the angel revel saki's angel revel i thought was an incredibly interesting character i thought his development was very very interesting throughout the series and he was one of my favorite parts i don't know i just really liked his character and enjoyed his development and growth throughout the series i will say that i did not hate watching this series as much as i thought i would after reading the very disappointing reviews and even after my first impression of you know the first kind of like five six seven episodes but i was complaining all along the way about issues with the story you know pointing out to others being like hello like what is this like i literally had to show clips to like my boyfriend just being like what why like what is this <laughs> so very frustrating at times to watch but interesting you know it, it kept my attention there's been plenty of anime series that were just so boring that i stopped watching but this one you know i couldn't stop <laughs> so that's something so do i like this series honestly not really but i do think that the series was refreshing in the sense that it was different and surprising in a lot of ways and always kept me guessing that's for sure <laughs> and it was an interesting experience it was a fun series to watch it was a fun ride so i am kind of bummed that the series didn't quite live up to my expectations but i don't regret having pushed through and watched the whole series i generally really love series that deal with topics like this like god you know sins demons that type of thing i find those very interesting and the you know just kind of like religious symbolism and undertones and like all that kind of stuff i find it very interesting in films and television and honestly that's a very common trope in film and television even if you don't think it's there it's a very common symbolism but i've just always found it very interesting ever since i was in school to like unpack that type of symbolism so i was very excited and honestly it didn't give me much to work with maybe just because sometimes it was so surface level that it didn't feel very intelligent or deep at times it was just very surface level i don't think that this is the worst anime ever made I think it has its flaws, but I also do recognize that there are a lot of people that love it and that's great. I'm glad if people enjoy it. So to answer the question that we're all wondering, why is no one talking about Platinum End? Honestly, I don't really know because even if this series was pretty ill received and did not live up to the expectations that people had for it, you would think that a lot of people would have a lot to say about that, but no. So my guess is a lot of the people who would have had something to say about this series might have just given up very early on, to be totally honest with you. Now, honestly, I can go on and on about this series all day, and I would be more than happy to talk to you guys in the comments about your thoughts on the series, but I will spare you looking at Aaron Yeager any longer. Aaron Yeager will get off of his soapbox about Platinum End for now. <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, I did actually have a lot of fun watching this series and um, writing up my thoughts on it and critique on it. It was a lot of fun. I would definitely like to do this for more series if you guys are interested. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope to do some more review and critical type videos in the future. These are super fun for me because I studied film and so it gives me a chance to, you know, use my skills. I didn't write endless pages of film critiques and symbolism dissections for nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna put that degree to use. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It would really help me out. And hit that subscribe button down below. If you're new here, join for more fun content. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok at Lauren Jane YouTube. Let me know in the comments down below if you watch Platinum End and what your thoughts on the series are. And be sure to put a spoiler warning if you're talking about spoilers, obviously. Um, and let me know if you decide to check the series out after watching this video and just tell me what you think, you know? <laughs>